Hello, my name is Courtney Robinson and I'm here today to talk to you about yoga therapy and pain management and so I want to be up front. I do a lot of public speaking and it's been a couple, it's been a little over a year since I did a, a presentation on this and since then I have had COVID and a concussion from a car wreck so I really am doing this not only to share the information but to practice for the presentation and so I'm going to be going over it I also have some notes you'll see me flipping through I have been asked I get asked to do a lot of presentations for like medical um, places that are involved in the medical world so in psychology i'm particularly this one is in the school of pharmacology the school of pharmacology um college medicine so university of arkansas school of medicine pharmacology and i wanted to film part of my talk from that so let's just get started the other thing i want to say is if you see me struggling to breathe or I look like I'm about to yawn or I yawn it's because I had COVID 10 weeks ago and I'm very short of breath and I'm having some issues <laughs> so bear with me and I can really tell you firsthand a lot of this stuff I'm using on myself so my name is Courtney Robinson I am the author of two books The Mud and the Lotus a guide and workbook for students of yoga which is a curriculum for schools and for anyone who's interested in learning more about the practice of yoga and the Mud the Lotus Guide to Successful Workshops, Retreats, and Conferences. I'm a certified yoga therapist. I've been in the business for 20 years. I have all of the credentials that are recognized in the yoga world through Yoga Alliance and the International Association of Yoga Therapists. I'm trained in 12-step yoga. I am the stress management specialist for the Dr. Dean Ornish program at Celine Heart Group under the care, under the, um, medical direction of Dr. Alan Hatch and I formerly was on the Yoga Alliance Advisory Group to the Standards Committee. We advised to the Standards Committee. I owned a vocational school for 10 years where I trained people to become yoga teachers at the 200 hour level, 300 hour level, and for a time I had a children's yoga teacher training program. So that's a little about me and so you'll know that I know my business and let's get into the role of the pharmacist as people utilize medicine so this won't only go for a pharmacist this will also be um, could go for someone in the medical profession or an individual who needs help with their pain management so as people begin utilizing yoga therapy and other lifestyle approaches complementary and alternative medicines or lifestyle changes they began to wean off their medicine often. I see this a lot at our clinic. And the pharmacist is the one who will be monitoring the usage and dosage along with the physician. So they're often part of a team. And that's one thing we wanna talk about a lot is that this is a team approach. Pain management is a team approach. There's not often one thing that goes into it. And so let's talk about what is yoga therapy and how can that help? But before we get into that, I would like to stop and say that there are some things we need to think about before we address this kind of layered approach to pain management. And that is, where is the pain coming from? We have a cartoon at work that shows a faucet on and a sink overflowing it and two doctors mopping the floor. And we often say, that's what doctors do. They, they clean up the mess but you got to get to the source of the program and that's turning off the faucet so or the source of the problem i should say not program is the pain caused by injury did was there a car wreck was there an accident is the pain caused by disease um, cardiac disease diabetes something like that uh, rheumatoid arthritis which also involves inflammation and we'll get to that as well is it caused by bacterial infection or a virus? For instance, what I'm struggling right now, and I was very healthy when I got this, I do have underlying conditions, but they were maintained. I caught a virus and it's causing restriction in my arteries. So we have to get down to what is the source before we can begin to treat it. And what is causing it? What What is this? reason it's being caused if it is for instance inflammation in the body then for in my case particularly 
uh, my A1C was tested, the inflammation marker, and it was extremely good. Like I had very good, like it needs to be under five, mine was 0.07. So inflammation is not my problem, even though they, they have said, oh, it's probably inflammation. It's, it's probably more constricting of the arteries if I had to guess. Um, and then, you know, what are we going to do about it? We want to have a modified layered approach. It's not just one thing. It's not like you go to yoga therapy and that fixes it. You need to see, there may be medications, there may be um, occupational therapy, physical therapy, yoga therapy. You may see a psychologist or go to some kind of group support. And you also are going to have to begin to modify your activities of daily living. Now, as a yoga therapist, a lot of people don't understand that the modern way of thinking about yoga is someone doing postures or what we call asanas. And that is not necessarily what yoga therapy is. Yoga therapy is an eight limb system that addresses many aspects of life to bring the body back into homeostasis. And again, this is one approach that may be layered with pharmaceutical care, um, other therapies as well. So there are eight limbs to yoga, and I'm going to go over those with you. And postures are simply one, and there is a heavy emphasis on meditation to tone the nervous system and release muscle tension. And particularly what I do, it's not just meditation, it's visualization, meditation, breathing, gentle postures, positive affirmations, and progressive relaxation techniques that often come with the stretching or meditation or combination of the two. So in yoga, those eight limbs are the external observances, how we are in the world. And why is this important? Well, this is these external internal observances are gonna help us see the way we live our life, okay? So external observances are kindness, truthfulness, non-stealing, and generosity. When we do those things, we feel better about ourselves. So for instance, we may not be able to get out and volunteer, but we might be in a situation where we have some money to give, or we can give some blankets or some coats. That makes us feel good. When we feel good, it reduces our pain because pain is generated in the brain. It's a response through the brain, the central nervous system, and the peripheral nerves. And oftentimes the way we feel in our heart and our mind impacts how much pain we have and our pain will impact our mind and can often lead to depression or anxiety. I noticed myself with having post COVID, I had to go back to work after a few weeks and um, at first I worked from home, but I was really worried about going back to work. But the act of going in, if only for a few hours, and being of service to someone else, even if my breathing was labored and it was challenging, it helped me forget about myself and my own problems. I noticed that I felt distracted and it made me feel better to some extent. The internal observances are purity, contentment, discipline, self-study, and surrender. So I may give homework, if you will, to the person that comes in, and maybe that might be a discipline of two minutes a day of meditation or one minute a day of breathing practice. This is what I'm doing with myself, actually. Um, contentment, to focus on the things that are good, that are going right. Yesterday, I did my contentment practice. Uh, actually, I called it a prayer practice. But I thanked God, You can whether you're secular or religious, I thanked God for my family, that I don't have to work full time right now, that I have resources. I know so many people in my position don't. And so I gave thanks and then I prayed for the, the people who are less fortunate than me. So that practice of contentment is very important because it has a psychological impact on our pain. And then we get to postures. Postures help. There's so much that they do. But when you're talking pain, the postures need to be very gentle. We don't want postures that are going to increase someone's pain. They need to be gentle and modified. So the postures are used to release tension. They're used to do things like clear 
Um, they help with the neural pathways, if you will. They, they help when you take the mental work and the physical work. It helps to change the neural pathways in the body, the way that we we might be thinking, I am, so I've been having trouble breathing, so I might say to myself, I am breathing with ease. I feel strong. I feel healthy. And then I do the postures, and that begins to work with the nervous system to try and change the brain-body connection, if you will. Um, mindful breathing techniques, doing some breath awareness, especially I have found with post-COVID, we know this calms the nervous system. I notice when I do my breathing techniques, if I've gone for hours without being able to get a deep breath, I'll do my breathing practice and then I'll be able to get a deep breath. So that's also goes back to discipline and self-study. Um, turning inward, going inside rather than focusing on outside things that we can't control. Turning inward with meditation um, and not being so focused on the external but the internal. Um, concentration, uh, using focused mindfulness practices and these often go together so there's turning inward concentration meditation and tranquility they're often kind of done together there is a path to them um, using your five senses and things like that to strengthen your nervous system so that when you hit fight or flight your body just like you tone just like i lift a weight and i tone my bicep when I meditate, especially focused meditation, meaning I'm focusing on something, whether it's my breath, prayer, um, it could be a word, that helps to strengthen my brain, i.e. my nervous system, and then the movements help to strengthen my, um, it helps the neural pathways, if you will. I often describe this to my students as Think about a dump truck in your brain, and that dump truck fills with asphalt. That's all the good stuff we're telling it. The meditation, the positive affirmative statements, I am healthy, I am strong, I am brave, I am courageous. Because, you know, a lot of times when you're struggling with pain or discomfort, you're, you're, it's really hard not to feel panicky. And so and scared. And then so we fill the dump truck with all the cognitive work. And then as we do the movements, it helps think about the depth truck going down through a path through your body and putting down the asphalt. It, it helps to lay down new pathways, if you will. And so that is what we're doing when we're doing meditation, um, physical movement. We're tying that all in together to strengthen what we call polyvagal toning, to strengthen the nervous system through the sympathetic nervous system bringing about a tone and strong nervous system. Yoga therapy and stress management. I work in cardiac care. I have also worked in uh, cancer care and 12 step. Includes breathing exercises, postures, imagery, meditation, progressive relaxation. My goal is to help the person I'm working with to engage their parasympathetic nervous system. I may have said sympathetic earlier. Um, sympathetic is can, is where the fight or flight or stress ho hormones are involved and that's important when you need it the pns is the rest and digest that's when we heal the sympathetic you're in a car wreck and you've got to lift something off of someone and you have to have that strength the sympathetic nervous system gives you that strength it gives you the ability to run away from danger the parasympathetic brings about healing and calming and regulates the digestion, the heart rate, things like that. When you're in a sympathetic state, the heart rate will go up, the breathing will be exacerbated, um, it'll go, it'll rise, you'll be like panting, and then when you meditate, the body begins to regulate the breathing, the blood pressure, the glucose that the liver produces and things like that, and it brings you back into homeostasis or balance. I've been really up in this in my own life because I was very athletic, and I was working out a lot, and um, hiking. I worked out about an hour a day cumulatively over a week. I hiked a lot on the weekends. I was hiking up to two trails a weekend prior um, and after work, and I have not been able to do any of that since catching COVID. So, um, yeah, I've been using a lot of these techniques on myself to heal. 
So I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some terminology that we use and that I would suggest you use in talking to patients, especially if you live in an area like I do in the South where it's the Bible Belt, is that stress management is often a more comfortable term than the word yoga. For some people that can be quite scary especially if they have a common idea of, oh my goodness, she's going to put me on my head or she's going to put my leg up in the air. No, so stress management is not like that at all. It's often run by a CIYT, a certified yoga therapist and or a very experienced teacher. In some cases, you'll have less experienced teachers who have special training. Ideally, the teacher has some training or background in this area because if they don't they could cause harm and that's very important we do not want to put um, a 50 year old person who's struggling with pain and can barely move in a general population yoga class that would be very very dangerous this is my powerpoint so some things i'd like to say is uh, i wanted like to read this these comments from arthritis.org your nervous system controls how you process and feel pain. The nervous system consists of two basic parts, the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, peripheral nervous system, nerves and nerve pathways throughout the body. My job is to teach a person to tone that nervous system. And we do that, and here is a suggestion from the national, basically it's the National Institutes of Health, they don't call it that in the UK, get some gentle exercise, breathe right to reduce pain, read books and leaflets on pain. There are some studies that show the more we understand pain management and the more we have compassionate caregivers, the less our pain gets. So that's super interesting. Counseling, having someone to talk to, distraction, I have found this so much with myself. Sharing your story about your pain. I've been talking a lot about having long COVID and it has helped me to reach out and help other people um, with their long COVID has helped me get the focus off myself and helping someone else. Uh, sleep. Melatonin is often prescribed with people with pain. Um, and so I have been taking melatonin at night to get good sleep. I've been sleeping a lot and on purpose. Taking a course, learning something new, how to deal with your pain, or I would even go as far to say learning something new that you enjoy. Uh, managing your stress. Harvard Health says deep breathing, eliciting the relaxation response, which is what we do in stress management classes. Meditations with guided imagery, we do a lot of that. Mindfulness, Tai Chi, yoga, positive thinking, and that is all part of what a certified yoga therapist should be able to teach. Now, when we feel pain, such as when we touch a hot stove, sensory receptors in our skin send a message via our nerve fibers. These are called A delta fibers and C fibers to the spinal cord and the brain stem, and then onto the brain where the sensation of pain is registered. The information is processed and the pain is perceived. Different people perceive pain differently. The more our nervous system is toned, the more we're able to control how we perceive pain. It doesn't mean the pain is different. It means that our ability to perceive it and process it becomes more um, we become stronger in that ability, for lack of a better word. So, put that over here. And just a few more notes before we go on. And I would love to have any questions. You can leave them in the bottom. So, what is the role of the nervous system in pain? The PNS undoes the effects of stress on humans, bringing about a relaxation response. When one is able to engage the PNS, you have a decrease in blood pressure and heart rate. Less of a workload on the heart, increase in lung capacity, better digestion. It increases the ability of the blood to carry oxygen. Feeling of calm and tranquility strengthens the immune system. Practicing stress management reduces the amount of stress hormones in the blood, such as cortisol and norepinephrine. Stress management has been shown to increase hormones like oxytocin, serotonin, and dopamine, which help reduce the way we feel pain, that have a healing impact on the heart and reducing inflammation and pain. 
so, so important. Research has shown that they did a research at Boston University Hospital um, School of Medicine on 320 predominantly low-income, racially diverse adults with moderate to severe chronic low back pain. The research carried out a non-inferiority trial, which is designed to assess whether a new treatment, which in this case was yoga, is as effective as current treatment, physical therapy. And I'll just go on to say that it was found to be just as effective. Now, I won't say that physical therapy is not effective because it can be. And I've trained many physical therapists in the yoga practice how to teach yoga, how to incorporate it. So many of them are aware and using that now. But not everybody has access to physical therapy, especially if they don't have insurance or they have poor insurance. So yet group yoga classes may often be available gentle um, in hospitals where they're paid for and they're available to people. So that's really important to note. There was a study of 1,600 participants that included yoga and they were checking to see if it could improve daily functioning activities of daily living with fibromyalgia and osteoporosis related curvature of the spine. Practicing yoga also improved mood and psychological well-being. And remember I talked earlier, if you're depressed, your pain is going to, you're going to perceive it worse. If you're um, hurting, it can cause more depression. So it's a cycle. So you have to practice you have to practice these techniques and it begins, I often tell people, you don't have to think about it, just do the work. Just come in, do the class, you don't have to think about it beyond the class and it works. Yoga was shown to help people with arthritis, fibromyalgia, migraines, low back pain, and many other types of chronic pain conditions. The study published in Annals of Internal Medicine found that among 313 people with chronic low back pain, a weekly yoga class increased mobility more than standard medical care. That's a pretty big deal. So, the other thing I'd like to add that I didn't discuss, and one thing we are trained to do, is that I am a big advocate for a whole food plant-based diet. And so, the reason I am is because I was diagnosed with, um, I had all kinds of, uh, when I was young, I caught Epstein-Barr and had post-viral fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, which ended up with um, thyroiditis, Hashimoto's, I removed part of my thyroid, PCOS, I mean, just the whole, you name it, if it's autoimmune, I had it. And then at 48, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, which all of these things run in my family, Sjogren's, um, RA, PCOS, they're all, my aunt, my grandmother, my, my cousin, they all have them. My uncle has Sjogren's. And um, I saw a lifestyle medicine, well, I saw a doctor who also practices lifestyle medicine. And he's, a, he's my rheumatologist. And he put me on a non-inflammatory whole food plant-based diet. And I was in the best shape of my life until I caught COVID. So at 50, um, right before my 50th birthday, I was in the best shape of my life this past summer at 49. And I directly tie that to a low inflammation diet and exercise, stress management, all the things I've been talking to you about today have kept me off of RA drugs where people in my family who are not doing that practice have not done well. And the people who have, they eat healthy, they exercise, they manage stress, they are doing well. So I could kind of sit back and look and say, okay, I have these genes. I can do what my grandma did and she did really well and lived a long, healthy life. Or I can do what these other folks in my family have done and end up really, really sick. And I chose the healthy path. And I believe I will get better from this because I live that lifestyle. So here I just talk a little bit about what I've seen in my perspective of over 20 years in the field. And that is that the what type of yoga people practice varies. Not everyone, everyone can practice yoga. Not everyone needs to be practicing the same kind of yoga. People who are sick or in chronic pain need gentle yoga. And when I say gentle, I mean very gentle, possibly only in a chair, maybe only on the floor. They may be able to do some standing postures. It's going to vary greatly from person to person. I have seen many, many people over the years come to me for 
certain things like cancer or um, cardiac issues, but they also had chronic pain. Maybe they had broken an ankle in their 30s and they're 60 now and they've had chronic pain. And after a few weeks in class, the pain begins to lessen. I had a guy who was a professional trombone player and he had always had pain here in his neck and shoulders. And within three weeks, it was gone. And so you see things like that and you just it just tells you um, as they develop new tools in their mental and emotional toolbox and become physically stronger and they have a reduction in inflammation in the body and the need for medication is often reduced or eliminated. We see that so much in our clinic. When people do the practice and they eat the lifestyle in our clinic, we do promote I work as I told you, I work in cardiac care. We do promote a whole foods, plant-based lifestyle, and we do make a few allowances for some lean dairy twice a day. I do not personally eat any dairy. And um, when people follow that diet, which is research-backed and Medicare pays for it, insurance pays for it, we often see them completely reverse their diabetes or get off their medication. It can take up to two years, but the changes begin to happen within a week. So it's pretty interesting and my husband has chronic angina and he does live this lifestyle to some extent but has a very stressful job and I believe that is one of the missing pieces for him. As I jokingly say sometimes you are never an expert in your own household even when you do stuff like this for a living. So the team approach I just want to reiterate that there is a big we really need to realize that there needs to be a team when we're talking about chronic pain. Doctors, nurses, APNs, uh, PAs, uh, physicians assistants, nurse practitioners, pharmacists, clinicians like myself, dietitians, exercise physiologists, social workers, OTs, PTs, um, and people who are in the complementary and alternative medicine fields like myself with yoga therapy, tai chi, acupuncture. It's not one thing, it's many things. And we should not feel embarrassed if we try yoga therapy and we get some relief, but we're not cured of every illness we have. Um, we may at times need medical intervention. And I think that's a more healthy, I feel like most healthy practices are balanced approaches. The pharmacist can insist in providing information to the patient and the healthcare team. I am not an expert in the field of pharmacology, but I've been a patient and I'm a clinician. And I know that the pharmacist often is the first to recognize when there's a problem, if the problem is possibly habitual use or addiction to medication, they also can be the one on the front line to offer alternatives and resources to the client. So, Right now, there are some directives to reduce, um, and this is where my heart is, the, in the opioid crisis and the crisis that we have with prescription medication, there um, is a directive, I want to say it's by the National Institutes of Health, to suggest complementary alternative medicines and other non-addictive forms of pain management, whether it's things like ibuprofen, anti-inflammatory, um, non-addictive drugs, Tai Chi, yoga, exercise, things like that. So there is a huge amount of money being put out in the world and in the hospitals to encourage alternatives. So in summary, it takes a team approach to support a client or patient on the road to recovery. And for many, medication is a blessing. And there's also a time for non-invasive ways to manage illness through lifestyle approach. I would say that a lot of what we see with illness is what we call standard and Western diseases, um, diabetes, heart disease. Those things are often caused by the way we live our life. We may have a genetic predisposition to them. I have a genetic predisposition, disposition, oh my goodness, my brain's not working, to rheumatoid arthritis. But the fact that it did not play out in my body until I was 48 is pretty amazing and the fact that I've been able to keep it under control through diet, exercise, and lifestyle is also amazing. Also, heart disease runs in my family and other than a genetic issue that I have being born with, um, I have a little bit of high pressure in my heart which actually is probably more of a post-viral condition. 
Um, I don't have any plaque buildup at all, and I'm 50 years old. I do not have cholesterol. I'm the only person in my family without high cholesterol because I've lived a healthy, clean life. So oftentimes we have to turn off the source. We have to find the source and turn it off. And that could often also be multiple things going on. It could be injury and standard American or standard Western diseases, but we, if we can get to the source and turn it off, we can reduce the need for medications and help people have a more balanced approach to life. So thank you very much. If you want to know more about me, you can find me at Courtney Robinson Yoga. If you just Google me, you'll find me. That's also my website. Thank you very much for being here. If you like this, hit a thumbs up, please. And if you want more videos by me, hit the notification bell. I speak all things yoga, lifestyle. I also teach financial independence, and I do that. So thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.